Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. It is Sunday, April 25th, and not a bad day. I'm going to be in the 60s today. Cloudy. You know, we're still looking for those bright sunny spring days, but they're coming. Been spending my weekend going between yard work and napping. So it's been an exciting weekend. <laughs> Uh, wife and I got our, our second, uh, second jab of the Trump vaccine yesterday. And, uh, you know, while I'm really happy about that, she's, you know, glad that she's protected too. It's just, uh, not sick. Don't feel sick at all. Just tired. Just like I've been, like I've been up all night. Uh, that, that yesterday I didn't do much of anything. I was just a vegetable. And, uh, today I feel better, but I still got that little bit of, but it's worth it. Yeah. Ah, so smoking a basket billiard. Uh, I think this is Weybridge. I grabbed the wrong jar this morning, but that's okay. And I'm just about done with this bowl, so I might have to reload. Still using this little uh, park lighter that I talked about on the live on Friday. Really cute little thing. Uh, Amazing thing about this is I filled this Thursday night and it's still going. Um, it's got a really it, it's interesting inside. So I'm gonna I'm, when when the fuel runs out I'm gonna make a short little video on it because I think it's it's something you guys would be interested in seeing. So the big thing I wanted to talk about today is the. Um, the Mamas Act, which I'm sure you're all aware of by now. This is the act that's currently in the Senate introduced by Durbin to uh, put a close to $50 tax on a pound of pipe tobacco. And I, uh, I mentioned on the live stream that I'd gotten in touch with uh, Jeremy Reeve from Cornell and Deal just to get his his input and he was kind enough to send me a letter from the uh, PCA which is the Premium Cigar Association and they've set up one of these quick links where you can go in and just put your information in it generates an email to your senator and you can edit it if you want and you probably should just to make it a bit more personal but the main points are there and you just click send and you're done it's really simple so I'm going to put a link, I've already put a post up, and you might have seen that, and if you've already taken care of it, thank you. Uh, I'm also going to put a link below, I'll put two links below, and the reason I'm putting two is there's a big long one that is the link from the, the PCA, but I've also made one of these tiny URL links in case you want to share it, because uh, I know YouTube probably won't let you um, copy or it. YouTube may not let you copy or you may not be able to use that link on something like Instagram. So use the tiny URL which you can actually just read off and copy because it's so short. Anyway, that was a lot of stuff you probably didn't need to know. There'll be links below to the uh, to the email form. Please take the time to do this. It's really important. Of course, if you're outside the US, you can't do it. Uh, please don't try because we don't want a lot of uh, faulty emails going through. We want this to look genuine. So I'm going to read the, um, this is the letter that came from the PCA. And this is in the post that I put out earlier, but just in case you didn't see it or didn't want to see it. Senator Durbin, Democrat from Illinois, has reintroduced a massive tobacco tax increase as part of a bill that is otherwise intended to address maternal mortality. Buried within Senate Bill 411, the Mothers and Offspring Mortality and Morbidity Awareness Act, or MAMA's Act, are changes to the tax code that would treat the entire tobacco industry as cigarettes. The result is an estimated 500 to 1,000 percent increase on the tax for premium cigars, depending on the size of the cigar, and a 1,650 percent increase on the tax for pipe tobacco. A tax this big isn't just lost profit. This bill will raise the cost for manufacturers, retailers, and consumers 
jobs, businesses, and the ability to buy and enjoy premium cigars, and of course pipe tobacco, will be at risk. Take action now by letting your U.S. Senator know that Senate Bill 411, MoMA's Act, should not be paid for on the back of a single industry. And then it's, there's a link that won't work for you, uh, but if you follow the link in the description, it will work. So, yeah, that's that's the problem. You know, they, they buried it in this bill that if you just read what the bill's about, you're going to say, oh, this is great. You know, this makes me feel good. We're going to protect mothers. And, but it shouldn't be paid for on the back of a single industry and not to the extent that it's going to destroy that industry. And it will. It will. You know, there's things that people have not even considered, like the fact that it's going to require the tax be paid by weight of tobacco. And that's not how um, cigars are sold. So now they're going to have to reassess how they're going to tax cigars completely. And this is going to cause, you know, there's going to have to be a whole retooling of that process. So, yeah, this is going to get really expensive. Uh, it's going to impact not just on tobacco sellers, but blenders and uh, growers and pipe makers and briar cutters and the, the, the brick and mortar stores that sell the stuff and everything else. This is going to be an absolute disaster for an industry that is very large in, in terms of the, the, not just the tobacco industry, but all the satellite things surrounding it and something that we all enjoy. So take a minute, click the link, fill out the form and hit send. It doesn't take that much time to do it. And it's the best we can do. You know, it's really the only thing we can do right now. Uh, I guess if you want to call your senator's office, if you want to write your own email and send it, that's good too. I don't know if physical letters have any more weight these days, but write a letter. Those kind of things are worth doing. What's not worth doing is panicking and complaining. Let's recognize the threat and address it. That's all we can do. So today's plan, I don't know what's on the schedule today. I'm gonna to do some more yard work. Um, probably gonna mostly take it easy because like I said, I do feel kind of run down. Yesterday, I probably napped off and on for a total of about four hours during the day, and then I went to bed and fell asleep and slept the whole night through and overslept by two hours. Uh, that's, and I'm not, you know, I usually, not that this is good, but I'm usually running on like five or six hours sleep at night. It's just all I can get. I, I can't force myself to sleep any more than that, so... So you know what I'm going to do as we <clears throat> kind of bring this close to a close? I'm going to reload this because it's empty now. And I'm going to put what might well be my last bowl of Honda Bookshop into it. Because I want to share it with y'all. The other thing, in case you didn't see the live stream, the other thing that Jeremy told me, well, he told me two things, actually, and, and these are both important. Uh, and this was by email. Jeremy wasn't on the live stream. But uh, Haunted Bookshop will be back. Pegasus will be back. They're a small company. They're doing everything they can to keep up with demand, and that's just it. It's got nothing to do with any politics or taxes or anything like that. And he said if anybody ever has a question about the availability of Cornell and Deal product, feel free to email info at... CND, I think it is. You can find it on their web page, and uh, they'll get back to you. So, the other thing that he told me is, unfortunately, it looks like Carter Hall and Prince Albert are done. Um, they have there has been a decision made by the company that purchased them to not produce them. And that's unfortunate, but.
You know, I can tell you as someone that really loves Carter Hall, I mean, heck, I, I instituted Carter Hall Day last year. Uh, I'm going to miss it greatly, but there's so many other good tobaccos out there that I'm, I'm okay with it. You know, it had a good run. It had a good run. We're really lucky, you know, we, we, we're living at a time when there's more tobacco choice and more quality tobaccos than there have ever been in history. And the one lesson in all of this is that we cannot expect that it's going to be there tomorrow. And maybe for some folks that's okay, you know, maybe, maybe that'll just be okay, I won't smoke pipes anymore. That's that's fine. For others, if you want to continue, you know, build a cellar. Build a cellar not because you want to age the tobacco. That's that's unimportant. Build a cellar because you want to have tobacco in ten years. Figure out how how many bowls you smoke or how how many ounces you smoke in a month, and then. Take a guess as to how long you're going to be smoking and multiply those two numbers together and buy that much tobacco. Buy it a little bit at a time, but put it away and don't touch it until you have that amount. When you have that amount, stop buying tobacco and enjoy. It's that simple. And for those of us that are really crazy like myself, learn to grow it. Not that hard. The best advice I can give you if you want to grow tobacco based on my one year of experience is plant a lot of seeds because uh, you're going to have a lot of loss of seedlings. But once that tobacco plant is established, it, it's very hard to kill. It will grow. And uh, if, you, if you don't need seeds, cut off the flowers as soon as they form. That's everything I know about tobacco farming. But I am trying to get someone to join us on uh, Friday Night Live that is a tobacco grower. So that'll be, that'll be cool. I mean, we've already had a, uh, um, I hate to say hobbyist because the guy's so darn good at what he does, but, but Tamper Tantrum was on and he told us about home growing tobacco, but I want to get somebody that grows it at an industry scale to, to talk about that. Anyway, I have probably occupied enough of your Sunday. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for uh, spending some time listening to this, hopefully enjoying a pipe with me. I'm going to go and uh, continue to enjoy this wonderful last bowl of Haunted Bookshelf and drink some more 8 o'clock coffee. And I guess my goal today is to see if I can get this lighter to run out of fluid. <laughs> take, care, take, uh, take care, guys, and until we speak again, I look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.